everybody. My name is Natalie Yeadon. I'm the co-founder and CEO with Impetus Digital. At Impetus Digital, we have built some of the best in class asynchronous and synchronous virtual collaboration and communication tools. We have worked with life science companies from across the globe over the past 14 years to help them with everything from virtual advisory boards, online medical education, virtual investigator meetings, and since the launch of our award-winning Insight Events platform, We've been helping companies as well with pharmaceutical companies with things like, you know, MSL and sales rep training, corporate events, um, as well as, you know, innovation hackathons and everything in between. But more importantly at Impetus, we really believe that everything starts from a conversation. And from these big, hairy, audacious conversations with some of the leading edge thinkers, digital provocateurs and healthcare thought leaders, we can all work together to collectively and positively disrupt healthcare. So I'm very excited to be um, ex welcoming one of these healthcare thought leaders at the table with me today. And this is actually Dr. Patrick Carroll. He is actually the chief medical officer at a company called Vita Health. He helps to oversee all matters pertaining to the provision of care, clinical outcomes, patient safety, healthcare information systems, as well as all the strategic initiatives and programs at the company. In addition, he manages Vita Health's relationships with healthcare systems, payer partners, and employee customers, as well as collaborates with the executive team in the development of new clinical programs. Prior to joining Vita Health in January of 2022, so quite recently, Patrick was the chief medical officer for the telehealth company, Him and Hers. And from 2014 to about 2019, he also served as the group VP and Chief Medical Officer at Walgreens. Welcome, Dr. Patrick Carroll. So happy to have you on the show today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Natalie. I really appreciate having the opportunity to talk about some of my career, but also what we're doing today at Vita Health, which I'm really excited about. Beautiful. So I think a lot of people will probably be interested. You started your career as a, as a physician, as a medical, uh, medical doctor. Yeah. Um, you know, tell us a little bit about what went through your mind, what was happening in your tra trajectory, for you to inspire you to go from clinical practice to working as a chief medical officer for a whole variety of companies? Um, yeah, that's a great question. My wife asks me that all the time. She, she goes, you know, <laughs> <laughs> gosh, you know, 30 years as a family physician and then in these leadership roles at both at a health system, at, at Hartford Healthcare and then Walgreens and now two uh, telehealth companies. So. I, 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 I've had a nonlinear career in, in some ways, which I think it all fits together. And to really understand, you know, my background from a clinical perspective is I'm a board certified family physician and board certified in adolescent medicine. But at my very foundation, I'm a family physician um, who really believes in providing access at an affordable price point for, for patients. And so what really informed my career was my first four years in practice after residency. I worked with the Indian Health Service in Shiprock, New Mexico on the Navajo Reservation. And what I saw there was um, a, a demographic, a, a population that had tremendous healthcare needs in terms of chronic conditions, um, substance abuse issues, uh, incredibly resilient population with very limited resources in terms of us supporting them of, in their healthcare journey. Um, but what I learned is way before this whole term population health was coined, we were doing population health of the Navajo Reservation. So we were, we were looking at a, a, a population with where we had limited financial resources and we're delivering really top value, high quality care by using all members of the team. That's not just physicians, it's nurse practitioners, it's clinical pharmacists, it's social workers, it's uh, home health. And it's actually was folks who actually worked in the chapter houses, kind of community health uh, workers. And what we're able to achieve is really great quality outcomes and providing access to care. So that is informed the remainder of my career. Um, again, this was before we even were talking about population health or value-based care. That was being done way back there from 1987 to 1991. And from there, I actually went to Concord, New Hampshire. I founded a small uh, family medicine practice, but used a lot of advanced practitioners. We had four advanced practitioners and just two physicians and, and really able to provide full access to care from nursery to nursing home, as I describe it. You know, I would 
practice in the very traditional manner, which was 30 patients per day. I'd visit folks in the hospital. I'd visit it as, as they transition to skilled nursing facilities and the whole continuum of care. I think what we looked at back then was, it was very defined hours. You know, we had after our call centers and such, but uh, we really wanted folks to have care from 8 a.m., 8 to 5 p.m. And then hopefully they didn't call us at night and weekends. Um, but I saw that actually transition. I, I'd call it the evolution of primary care through the years where there was really a demand for uh, accessible care on a patient's and, and uh, hours as opposed to physician hours. So I saw that as a major transition point in the 25 or 30 years when I practiced in Concord, New Hampshire, where my career kind of took a, uh, you know, I, I would say a, a, just a diversion, which was actually really good for me in terms of using my skill set was I actually returned to the Indian Health Service from 2009 to 2011 to do a major population health initiative with them, setting up school-based health clinics, helping convert them to an EHR, and then um, fascinating return to the place where I started 25 years prior. Same place, Shiprock, New Mexico, and the Navajo Reservation. I love the work out there in that two-year project. Um, and we're able to get some really good quality results in terms of providing access to care, particularly uh, for adolescents. Um, as a result of that, when, when that project was winding down, I got recruited to work as a regional chief medical officer of Atrius Health, a really value-based uh, multi-specialty group in Boston where 80 to 90% of the patients were in some risk-based contracting, particularly Medicare Advantage. And then from there took a job with Hartford Healthcare working with a traditional integrated delivery network, uh, running their clinical integration network and, and working with them on value-based contracts. And then hopped over to Walgreens for five years where initially I was responsible for their retail clinics, which is a really consumer-facing um, uh, healthcare model, and then actually developed with them a primary care strategy. I was very involved with their initial uh, relationship with Village MD, which I'm thrilled that they're expanding that nationally through a large investment in Village, because it just made so much sense to provide access to care at great locations at Walgreens and to use those pharmacy ass assets right in those brick and mortar sites to deliver really high value care. Um, so after five years at Walgreens, the startup bug got to me. It was like, why not look at where things are going in digital and startup health and apply some of the learnings I had through the years in that environment? So I joined Hims and Hers in May of 2019. What I loved about Hims and Hers and what they do today is they are really focused on being the front door access to healthcare for a demographic that tends to be millennials and younger who actually access healthcare very differently than I did or than my traditional patients did. Um, essentially, um, that demographic Googles up a symptom, educates themselves, and then actually um, accesses care. And they love the asynchronous modality to be able to connect with the physician for very specific conditions to get treatment, to get medication sent to them. And they're perfectly willing to pay cash for that because most of them, guess what, are on high deductible health plans and their insurance doesn't cover these services, particularly stigmatized conditions. They love the anonymity, um, the high quality care and the ease of access to care um, for these conditions. So I did help, you know, take Hims and Hers public a little over a year ago. I really love the work there. I still serve on the board at Hims and Hers. Um, but I, I kind of decided that I want to get back to my roots, which is really population health, chronic disease management. And that's where the opportunity for with Vita came up. They, they are really kind of merging, you know, treating mental health, not in isolation, but in conjunction with chronic disease conditions. And so I love what they their focus and their ability to uh, kind of marry those two together. Because as a primary care physician, I saw mental health conditions really impact chronic cardiometabolic conditions such as diabetes and hypertension and hyperlipidemia. Okay. So that's awesome. a long winded journey of, of where I've been at, but I, I think Fantastic. it all fits together. Beautiful. Let's actually linger a little bit about Vita Health, which is where you are today. So um, some really interesting things about the company. And first of all, it's really impresses us with the whole idea of the round the whole health approach. 
So a kind of a wellness approach as opposed to a sickness approach. So much more proactive as opposed to reactive. But also a very interesting that I see that keeps going over is that you, you talk about how every chronic condition is a mental health condition. So I was wondering actually if you can speak a little bit about what Vita Health is and what it is, what your objectives are around wellness care. So Vita is intensely focused on caring for both mind and body. And so I'll give you an example. If you actually look at diabetes, 70 million pre-diabetics in this country, over 37 million folks diagnosed with diabetes, uh, particularly in the older population with diabetes, there's a high prevalence of depression. Uh, some estimates are 40 to 60% with, with uh, folks with diabetes also have co-occurring depression. And I saw this in my own clinical practice. You could not just see the patient three times a year, adjust their diabetes medication, and then hope you're gonna get great results. Guess what? If they're depressed, there's about a 75% increased risk of them not taking the medication. So 50% of diabetics are non-med adherent, and that's even worse if you're depressed. So if you treat the depression, you're going to improve the diabetes. Why? Because you're gonna improve adherence, you're gonna motivate patients to actually care for themselves, and everything we do at Vita is totally integrated to treat both the mind and body. Everything from when we talk to patients through our coaches and counselors and CDCSs, it's all around motivational interviewing. Really what motivates that patient, that customer to get better. Uh, we have to understand that. That improves outcomes. Um, and we ground much of what we do in cognitive behavior therapy that um, if you're depressed, how are we going to work with you to help with that depression? How are we going to work with you to improve your diabetes care? So as you can see, what I intuitively knew as a primary care physician, I actually see the data on today working with Vita that when you combine the two, you get much better results and you get much better engagement because patients realize that they're making improvements uh, through our motivational interviewing. We understand why they want to get engaged with their own care, and we empower those patients. Absolutely. Sounds really, really interesting. So I, I want to see if we can break this down in terms of the how the end user, the healthcare consumer, um, is going to get access to your platform and to your software and to this whole holistic approach. Tell us a little bit about who, what your business model is, right. who you're targeting, and how that piece of software gets in front of a healthcare consumer. Yeah, so we have two major markets and we're developing a third. Um, the two that's the base of our business are employers. So what are employers, and when I was at Walgreens, I was very involved with the employee health programs. Um, we had five or six different offerings for our, you know, our 250,000 employees at Walgreens. So we use you know, a physical therapy application, a diabetes uh, vendor, and what we're seeing from employers today, they really want more of a holistic solution, a one-stop. We will care for your employees for cardiometabolic, for mental health, um, even for physical therapy. And so in our employer market, we go to an employer and we say, uh, we can be that one-stop shop. And if you actually look at our app, it's very engaging. We get high percentage of participation compared to other uh, companies in the programs and we get results and we're so confident in the results we actually guarantee an ROI uh, we guarantee those results in terms of engagement and and some of the you know the key metrics that they want to improve on whether that be hemoglobin a1c or reduction in blood pressure so that's the employer market on the payer side we partner with a few payers around providing kind of that high touch care management through our platform for payers. Um, and what we see is there's actually a convergence between employers and payers. They wanna see a return on investment. They're just not happy enough that, oh, guess what? We're checking the box. We're providing cardiometabolic support, mental health support. They wanna see that you can actually reduce costs and improve quality of care. And so for both of those markets, you know, that's been intentional of how we do that. What I think is unique about Vita compared to our competitors, we have a really integrated uh, app 
that will bring someone in and care for all of their chronic condition needs. So I'll give you an example. My contention is we're not gonna solve chronic care uh, with an app. It has to have a high human touch. And so when we look at a typical Vita uh, customer, they may come in with diabetes, depression, and obesity, um, and we enroll them into a whole health program. And part of that program, they get a coach, a dietitian, a counselor, they get uh, peripherals that may be a smart scale where we're tracking their weight. It may be a blood pressure monitor. If they're on insulin or they have complex diabetes, we actually uh, provide glucose monitors. Um, and we're getting into today CGMs, which I think are really fascinating what they can do in terms of getting data. We ingest all that data on our platform and we have constant outreach with a coach. A coach actually guides a patient through the healthcare journey. And then they also get access to that dietitian, to the counselors, to that higher level of care. And what does that result in? It results in high engagement. You know, I, I saw recently one of our customers, just the, the outputs from that customer in a, in a six month period, uh, they had over 30 sessions with counselors and, di and, and dietitians. Um, they uh, responded to over 160 messages. They had 100 and, over 170 lessons of content that they derived from our app. Um, and they logged over 5,000 metrics. That's blood pressures, blood sugars. And so that is real engagement. And what does it result in? Well, it resulted for this patient, a reduction in hemoglobin A1C by one, uh, a reduction in uh, the PHQ-9 of uh, 70%. So they were less depressed in a 9% weight loss, which is really incredible. Um, most weight loss programs get you to three to 5%. So it's really using tech to scale, using human touch that's married into that tech to be able to deliver really a differentiated experience um, for our customers. We live in a a really interesting place in the world. Almost everybody, at least you know, in in uh, most countries, have a, a mobile phone. Right. Um, many people have many different apps on their phone, and we're basically inundated with data, information, and everybody vying for our attention. So, yeah. on the healthcare consumer side, as well as the other folks that you've mentioned, payers and employers, how do you manage to have them filter through the noise? in terms of the number of different kinds of apps and monitors and everybody's kind of doing the same thing. How are you filtering through this noise to make you sort of stand up from the crowd and being sort of the, you know, the integral platform, if you will, for all things health? Yeah, that's a great question. And our solution is one app. <laughs> you don't have four different apps you have to go to. Um, my three millennials call me tech challenged and I am, but it, you know, is if, if I had uh, multiple chronic conditions, I wouldn't want to go to four different apps. I'd want one integrated app, one integrated experience, and then draw in all of these providers through that one app, through that one platform. Um, that's how you get rid of the noise and the distraction. You have one source of truth, one app of truth to manage your cardiometabolic as well as mental health conditions. That really uniquely positions us in the market, quite honestly, and it's, it's, it's appreciated increasingly by our customers, uh, both the individual customer, but also you know, the payers and the employers. They are looking for a holistic solution, and, and we provide that through our app and through the integration of both the mental and physical health conditions. Beautifully said. We have just surpassed one of the most unprecedented times in history. In fact, I think we're still going through it. I don't know when this yeah. debacle is going to end, but we're going through interesting and new things. However, we have obviously gone through and are going through um, the most pivotal pandemic that we've had in many, many years. And uh, certainly along with that, on the pandemic of COVID-19, we have also seen huge changes in, in workforces. We've heard about the great resignation. We've heard of the era of the great dispersion. There's been so much geopolitical changes. So on the one hand, you have you know, all sort of impact about closing people and the impact that that's had on their mental health and the needs for these kinds of things. 
and then the impacts it's had on people's health and mental health. But at the same time, we've had this huge resignation and people are vying for talent. So I'm curious as to where um, Vita Health sort of fits into this, where you're looking at huge mental health issues, healthcare issues, and companies looking for things to attract employees. Where does Vita fit into that triangulation, if you will? Yeah, you know, we have a place at the table. And the reason for that is just through our engagement scores, you know, we have an NPS of over 80, higher even for uh, uh, Spanish speaking customers. And so they love what we have to offer. And as an employer, they find value in that, that, you know what, the relationship between their team member and them is not transactional. They, the employer actually cares about their health, keeping them happy, keeping them functional uh, at work and at home. And to have something like Vita as an offering, we think tells their team members, you know, my employer cares about my health and not just what my hemoglobin A1C is, but my mental health. You know, there's a huge mental health crisis in the country. This preceded the pandemic, but it really was exacerbated in the pandemic. You know, over 30% of folks today, we think you have anxiety or depression that's been exacerbated by the pandemic and try to access mental health care. Good luck. In my own primary care practice, when I had a uh, you know, a, a patient with significant mental health issues, I was at a loss where to start, where to refer them to. How do I get a counselor? Are they in network or not? If they need a psychiatrist, how do I access that? Well, guess what? Almost 50% of psychiatrists today don't even take insurance. So if I'm an employer and I'm providing, you know, counseling, coaching, um, and then access to prescribing to my employees, I'm doing our, my team members, my employees, a great service. And it's a win-win for the employer. They're, you know, the absenteeism goes down. Uh, they value what they're getting at that workplace. And they would be reluct more reluctant to move on to another employer that doesn't offer such a high level of service. So we absolutely think it creates stickiness by providing needed services for their team members. Absolutely. And it is, again, a, it's a really great, you know, um, employee benefit, which I'm sure a lot of companies are looking for to be able to attract this talent during this great resignation period. Um, I'm also just curious as well to so many different apps, so much software, everybody's getting into the space and healthcare is highly disruptable. And we see a lot about machine learning, smart algorithms. We hear about blockchain. We hear about basically about machines and chatbots and all these kinds of things. And these, at the same time, people are looking at these personalized healthcare programs. Tell us about where you think artificial intelligence fits into the equation when what you're really providing, and you use the word service, where you're providing a real human being and a humanistic approach. How do you compare the two? Yeah, so we use AI on our platform. You know, when we are ingesting this data, this, you know, the blood glucose readings, uh, the PHQ-9s, you know, PHQ-8s that measure depression, the GAD-7s that measure anxiety. Um, we're able to actually sift through and curate that data into making actionable plans in conjunction with our providers, that being our coach and counselors, to deliver really smart care to patients. And so we absolutely use high-tech and AI um, but we're not gonna solve again, healthcare through an app, even if it's supported by AI. What we're going to do is to be able to scale with that tech, identify the actionable data points, and then have that real human outreach uh, to engage those patients. So they feel like they're part of something or someone that is actually helping them with their healthcare problems. Um, the apps alone, whether that's AI supported or not, is not going to move the ball down the field entirely. You have to combine that human touch, and that's our differentiator. Absolutely. So we we're kind of in this time period where um, you know we've got these great apps and what have you. We've heard about telemedicine taking on a whole new world since the pandemic. I'm just curious. You know, you talk a lot about support folks. Um, you know, coaches, people who are certified in this area, 
But what about physicians and the ability to actually prescribe real medications? Is that going to fit into Vita Health at some point? Some point Absolutely. Absolutely. So we're looking very intentionally at that, uh, particularly in the mental health area. The reason is it is hard to access a prescriber. So we are uh, intending to offer prescriptions, particularly around very focused conditions, which is anxiety and depression, which is the majority of mental health issues um, through our platform. And so that is an intention of ours going forward. Uh, that is what I'm building out with the leadership team at, at Vita Health. So you'll hear and see more about that in the future. Um, do we believe in totally virtual primary care with you know, a nationwide prescriber network to do things like colds and flu? No, I think we will focus as we get into the prescribing area on what we're really good at today with our current provider base, which is chronic conditions. So that, that may be virtual endocrinology consults, that may be uh, prescribing for things like hypertension and diabetes, but all of that acute episodic care um, that will never be part of what we do because that's not our core. Our core is around mental health and cardiometabolic. Absolutely. We are um, living through unprecedented times, obviously. And, you know, the question comes down to as we start to experience healthcare in a different way, uh, a very personalized approach. We hear all about, you know, biohackers or N equals one protocols and proto. Uh, prototypes and all sorts of things happening. I was just curious about the idea around decentralized clinical trials as pharmaceutical companies were desperately looking for ways to ensure that they were still innovating and building new medicines and doing things when there was a, unfortunately a bit of a moratorium at the time of, of COVID and getting very uh, innovative around endpoints and patient reported outcomes, those sorts of things and collecting real world evidence in order to accelerate innovation. I'm curious about products like Vita, if pharmaceutical companies could leverage the, something like that to be able to help accelerate or to bolster on or augment, augment their clinical trials. Yeah, it's always possible. That hasn't been a focus for us. We actually have a, a really top-notch clinical outcomes, outcomes team with researchers. and But our focus has been really around um, specific conditions that we treat. For example, our outcomes team has proven that if you treat a patient with diabetes for the mental health conditions, there's a 33% improvement in hemoglobin A1C as opposed to just treating the diabetes alone. So those are the type of outcomes that we study. And, and you know, we release two to three studies every quarter, but it's really focused on the results, the ROI for our customers, on the programs we offer today. That being said, you're right. You know, we're sitting on a lot of data and a lot of information, but in terms of partnering with pharma, that has not been a focus to date. I'm not sure if it will be in the future. Today, we're just really intensely focused on the conditions we treat and to show through our research and outcomes team that there's a ROI, we can lower medical costs, but more importantly, improve engagement and achieve some measurable improvement on things like diabetes, whether that be hemoglobin A1C or blood pressure monitoring in terms of reducing the number of folks with blood pressures more than 140 over 90. So that's where our focus and our research is today. Absolutely. Will you be getting into future technologies that makes the experience on your app much more immersive. We hear a lot about the metaverse. We hear about you know um, virtual reality headsets. Um, I think just on that same on that same vein, um, what are you thinking about in terms of the the virtual experience? Or you know, will this eventually become something like software as a medical device? What is your thoughts about the future of what Vita Health will be providing? Yes, yeah, so we we have a really top notch uh, product and engineering team. And today we're really focused again on the, condi the common conditions that we treat and, and using that, that team's resources to, uh, to, to really improve care along that. But we are open to every new technology as long as it can help with our core conditions. And there is so much out there, as you said, uh, 
at times you can focus a little bit on that next bright, shiny coin and lose your focus on your core business. And we just, we just won't do that, but we are looking at all kinds of different solutions. I would say, you know, that whole AI aspect, we are absolutely building more AI to focus on those cardiometabolic and mental health conditions. Uh, really, again, using all that data we're collecting and making it into something that's actionable. Um, virtual reality, probably not our top priority right now, but we'll explore all of that. And we have the team to be able to do that and to execute on it. Beautiful. So well articulated. I think Vita Health is fantastic. I especially appreciate your level of focus. That truly says and differentiates companies that do go after the next shiny tool versus really being focused on what you're great at where you're providing the most value and uh, the chronic condition piece, especially around mental health, there just can't be enough resources out there for that very specific situation. So I really want to thank you uh, for this discussion. For anybody who's interested in contacting Dr. Carroll for partnerships, discussions, looking at how you can get involved, how you can maybe incorporate um, Vita Health into your company, please look for his contact details in the show notes below. We also encourage you, if you can check out infinitedigital.com, these are the kinds of conversations we have with not only pharmaceutical companies, but their physicians, allied healthcare providers, payers, and patients. If you're talking about these kinds of programs, how to augment them, how to partner, how to do decentralized trials. And we, we do this through a series of asynchronous and synchronous collaboration touch points. We want to thank everybody for their time. Please like and subscribe to our channel. We'd really appreciate if you can also leave us some feedback on iTunes. Thank you as well, Dr. Carroll, for an absolutely fantastic conversation today. Great. I really appreciate the opportunity to get in front of your audience and to describe what we do at Vita. We're really excited about what we're offering, and, and we just want to socialize it more and more out there. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody.